Yo. One, two, three, four. From an underground laboratory in Pennsylvania comes the Senor Fancy Pants Show, a family-friendly podcast that is worth at least ten times more than you paid for it. Please give it up for your host, Senor Brian Fancy Pants. Awesome. Wow. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. All right, we got to get the show started. Welcome to the Senor Fancy Pants Show. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Logan. Hi, Afton. Hi, Daryl Strawberry. I know it's been way too long since our last episode. We're sorry about that. We really missed you, though. So this is episode 18. So if you haven't downloaded the first 17 episodes, go do that now and help support us. As always, my spectacular co-host Lincoln is here. Hi, thanks for coming back. You smell nice today. Indeed. So the month of June is almost over, which means that for most students here in the United States, summer vacation has officially begun. Now Lincoln's summer break actually began about a week ago. How does it feel, Lincoln? Amazing. Yeah, you're excited? See, I remember being a kid about a million years ago, and I still remember how it felt when the last day of school finally ended. I'd be watching the clock and counting down the minutes, and it wasn't that I didn't like school. It was just that after a whole year of school, I was ready for a break. Was it exciting, Lincoln, that final minute before uh, before the bell rang? Yes. Yeah, I bet it was. Now, for all of you out there starting your summer vacations right now, congratulations on making it through another year of school. It's the last day of school, and I'm ready to run and go play in the pool and have all kinds of fun. It's the last day of school, and I'm ready, I'm ready to run. All right, so for those of you on summer break, what are you going to do with all that time off? Send us a message with some ideas, because we need some ideas. Last summer, Lincoln and I, along with the rest of our family, went to Australia. And uh, you can go hear about all that in the first two episodes of this podcast, if you haven't already. Now, this summer, we don't have any across-the-world trips planned. So we've got to find some other ways to fill our time. Don't we, Lincoln? Yeah. Yeah, what are we going to do all summer? Um, I don't know. We're going to visit some family. Yeah. Um, I'm going to play a few Senor Fancy Pants concerts, so that'll be fun. We'll probably go to the library. Yeah. Maybe play some video games, maybe play outside, or maybe we can play some board games if we get bored. That's not what that means, though. Um, If you know of any great board games, you out there in the audience, please send us some suggestions. We're looking for more games in the uh, ages 7 plus kind of range. Now, I recently taught Lincoln how to play one of my favorite board games from my childhood. It's a classic game that many of you have probably heard of. What game am I referring to, Lincoln? Chess. That's right. When I was in fourth grade, I got really interested in the game of chess for some reason. And I used to carry around my own chess board along with an official chess rule book. I bet you didn't know I was that cool, Lincoln. Yes, cool is the word I was thinking of. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with chess, you've probably at least seen a chess board. It looks like a checkerboard. But chess is a little bit more complicated than checkers. Each player starts with 16 game pieces on their side of the board. And each of the pieces um, have their own unique rules about how they're allowed to move around the board. And you have to take turns moving around trying to capture the other player's pieces while also trying to avoid getting your pieces captured. And each player has a piece that's called the king. And that's the piece that you're trying to protect the most. Now, Lincoln, um, I don't, we've only played once so far, but did you find the game complicated or are you pretty much catching on? I'm catching on. Yeah, so it's not that bad. It's a little harder than some other games, but you'll get the hang of it. So the way to win in chess is by putting your opponent's king in checkmate which basically means that you've moved your pieces in such a way that there is nowhere for your opponent's king to move without being captured by one of your pieces. So that's a very basic overview of what chess is like. Now, the shortest number of moves that you can possibly win chess in is two, but that's some expert-level stuff right there. Now, there are some books that can teach you how to do that. I know because I had some of them. 
Now one fun fact about chess, well maybe not fun, but it's a fact about chess, is that the second book ever printed in English was about chess. So it's an old game, it's a classic game, but I love it, and Lincoln is learning to like it. So we're probably going to play quite a bit of chess this summer, and if Lincoln gets really into it, then we're going to consider purchasing a really cool Legend of Zelda chess set that we saw online recently. Right, Lincoln? Yeah. Yeah, but we recommend that if you've never played chess before, go ahead and give it a try. It's a great strategy game that many experts believe is good for your brain, certainly more so than playing with your phone. Now, I don't know if chess has been scientifically proven to make you more intelligent, but I can guarantee that it won't make you less intelligent. It's a tough game to master, but you'll get better the more you play it. All right, now it's time for a segment sponsored by everyone's favorite Central New York resident, it's time for Keith Brockway's Question of the Day. Keith Brockway's Question of the Day. All right, so the question for this episode is, what's the best prank you've ever successfully played on someone? So first off, Lincoln, what is a prank? Um, it's, it's when you play a practical joke or a trick on someone. Right, so some classic popular pranks are like toilet papering someone's front yard or house, or putting plastic wrap on a toilet, or another one is putting shaving cream on someone's hand when they're sleeping and then tickling their face. And then the most classic one I can think of is a whoopee cushion. Do you know what that is, Lincoln? Yeah. Yeah, what is it? It's this, uh cushion that you blow up it's like then, a rubber cushion so you then, inflate it right yeah and then what do you do with it and then you just hide it underneath something where people sit and then you just and then it just makes a fart noise a fart noise now that yeah. is classic all right so lincoln enjoys a good prank every now and then but usually his involve fake poop or something i don't mind pranks as long as they don't destroy someone's property or as long as they're not mean but anyway, let's just check out some of the answers we've received. Starting with Keith Brockway, of course. Keith said, I had this roommate at summer camp. We used to have 12 packs of Coca-Cola in our room. And he would open one and start drinking it and then go out of the cabin to do something. And while he was gone, I would switch his open soda with one that had water in it instead. I think I made him spit a few times. All right, that's a simple but effective prank. Plus, water is way healthier anyway, so in a way you were helping him, Keith. Keith also said he used to hide his roommate's Dave Matthews Band CDs every day. All right, kids out there, if you're listening to this, you might need to ask your parents what a CD is and what a Dave Matthews is. Now, I guess Keith's not much of a fan of Dave Matthews Band, so Dave Matthews, if you're listening, don't worry too much about Keith's opinion. There's no denying that your band is ridiculously talented. All right, so those are some interesting pranks from Keith. Let's check out some other answers. Actually, first off, what did you think of those ones, Lincoln? Those are cool. Interesting, right? I wasn't expecting those. All right, so some of the other answers. Derek said he once packed flour tightly on top of all of the blades of his friend's ceiling fan. And then his friend walked in, flipped the switch, and about 15 seconds later, when the fan got up to speed, it exploded and covered the entire room with flour. That sounds kind of messy. Please don't ever do that to me, Lincoln. I won't. But that is kind of, a, that's, a, that's a clever idea. I like that one. But don't try that at home. All right, Ricardo said he hid a dictionary in the ceiling of a classroom. Years later, he bet someone that there was a book hidden in the ceiling. And he won $20. All right, not bad. So hiding that book was a great investment. What do you think of that one, Lincoln? That is cool. All right, so, I mean, I guess you have to hope that you're in that same room years later, but that's a good one. All right, Mark said that he changed the keys on his boss's computer keyboard, and so his boss could not figure out how to log back into his computer. That's a pretty good one. That's clever. Good job, Mark. Alex said... We knocked on my friend's door, and we were wearing ski masks. We tied him up and put him in the car and took him to Six Flags for his birthday. He was blindfolded the entire drive there and had no idea who kidnapped him. Well, it had a good result, right, Lincoln? Yeah. They got him to Six Flags, which is fun, but I'm guessing that was a pretty scary prank for the guy who was blindfolded. I don't recommend that, but that, that was a pretty cool story. All right, Jeff said... It was uh, He has a prank from when he worked at camp one summer. During the night, he says, I and a couple of friends moved every picnic table 
Every folding chair, trash can, canoe, etc., anything that was not secured to the ground, they moved them into concentric circles around the flagpole. Do you understand what that means, Lincoln? Concentric? Um, yeah. You got an idea? Basically, it means that they started by putting a small circle of objects around the pole, and then they put another larger circle of objects around the first pole, and they kept making more circles, each one bigger than the last, until they had a bunch of circles of stuff surrounding the flagpole. All right, that's not a bad idea, Jeff. I've never heard of that one. Good job. All right, the next one comes from Mari. Mari gave an example of an amazing prank that someone did to her. She wrote, The best prank I've had pulled on me was when someone bought 40 alarm clock clocks off eBay and hid them in my and my friend's room. They were each set to different times and they were duct taped under beds behind and behind other furniture. That was annoying as all get out, but it was a brilliant prank. I agree. What do you think of that one, Lincoln? That is crazy. Brill it's brilliant, yeah. That's uh, that, It sounds like someone had a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> yeah, you get it, Lincoln? Time on their hands because... The prank involved the use of many clocks, which are used to track time. Yeah. Humor. All right, Logan said, I had a geometry teacher who screamed at everything. And the word everything is in all caps. Everything. Now, if someone dropped the ruler even, she would be scared. But on the last day of school, the class wanted to scare her, and I was the smallest freshman in the class, so I hid under her desk and jumped out at her. She screamed so much that she started crying. Oh, that poor geometry teacher. All right, that's an interesting one. What do you think, Lincoln? Is it okay to scare your teacher? Yes. Okay, I might disagree, but good job, Logan. All right, last one. Let's see. Amanda said, I had a co-worker that was constantly messing with me. He would hide stuff from my desk, mess with my chair so that it would shrink down when I sat in it, and all sorts of stuff like that. I finally got payback, though, when I coated the ear of his phone in Vaseline. His next phone call was not a happy one. Ha! She actually wrote the word ha at the end. I didn't add that. What do you think of that, Lincoln? Vaseline on the ear? Good prank? He. He? he, he. <laughs> kind of gross, but good job, Amanda. Well done. All right, thank you for all your answers. Now, if you're going to try any pranks this summer, make sure they're not going to destroy anyone's property and try to keep them fun and not mean. All right, I think it's time for a, a music break. What about you, Lincoln? Yeah, I think we should do it. Okay. Now, our friends in the band Rat Boy Jr., who I love, recently put out a brand new album called Lucky Foot and Sunny Moon, and it is great as usual. So we're going to play a fun song from that album right now. What is it, Lincoln? Here's the song Anything Can Be a Hat by Rat Boy Jr. Anything Can Be a Hat. Enjoy. Hey, Maddie. Hey. What are you doing? Nothing. I'm just making some hats. Yeah. Is that a banana on your head? Yeah, but it's also a hat. Wait a minute, you just put a banana on your head and call it a hat? Just put whatever you want on your head and it's a hat. Like anything can be a hat? Anything. Anything at all. What? Listen, and then you sing about it. Anything can be a hat. Put it on your head, put it on your head. Anything can be a hat. Put it on your head, put it on your head. Anything can be a hat. Put it on your head, put it on your head. Anything can be a hat. What? Put it on your head, put it on your head. An apple, it's a hat. A shoe, another hat. A pine cone, that's a hat. Put it on your head, put it on your head. A sock, it's a, a hat. hat. A watermelon, another it's hat. A cat, another hat. Put it on your head, put it on your head. A candy bar, a sweet hat. A big fish. A stinky hat. A small fish. A small stinky hat. Put it on your head, put it on your head. A sunflower. A nice hat. A seashell. An ocean hat. A banjo. Bing, 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 bing. Put it on your head, put it on your head. Anything can be a hat. Put it on your head, put it on your head. Anything can be a hat. A banana. Put it on your head, put it on your head. A pony. A horsey hat. A frisbee, a flying hat, a stamp, a mailing hat, put it on your head, put it on your head, a tambourine, jingly hat, a coat, that's a warm hat, a book, a smart hat, 
Put it on your head, put it on your head. A pillow, a sleepy hat, a marshmallow, a fluffy hat, a fluffy hat, a marshmallow hat. Put it on your head, put it on your head. Anything can be a hat. What? Put it on your head, put it on your head. Anything can be a hat. Put it on your head, put it on your head. Now it's time for our place of the day. If this is your first time listening, this is a segment where we choose a place in the world and then we try to find a few interesting facts about that place that we can pass on to our listeners. Today we chose a place here in the United States. It's the southernmost state in the continental U.S. It's hot and humid there right now. It is appropriately known as the Sunshine State. What state is it? Florida! Here are just a few random facts about Florida. The capital of Florida is called Tallahassee. Tallahassee is home to somewhere around 195,000 people. It is the seventh largest city in Florida by population. The largest city by population is Jacksonville. Florida is home to Disney World and many other theme parks. I'm sure you've all heard of Disney World, the most well-known, most visited collection of theme parks in the world. Well, you can find that magical place in Orlando, Florida. Orlando is currently the fourth largest city in Florida and claims to be the theme park capital of the world. Other than the Disney parks, you will also find SeaWorld and the Universal Orlando Resort, where you can go to a place Lincoln would love to check out, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Florida is a peninsula. A peninsula is a piece of land that is almost entirely surrounded by water, but it is connected to the mainland on one side. The word peninsula in Latin means almost an island. Florida shares its border with Alabama and Georgia. Florida has more golf courses than any other state. In Florida, there are over 1,300 golf courses. Florida is also the location of the World Golf Hall of Fame and Museum. So if you're into golf, Florida is a great place to visit. The most important NASCAR race of the year takes place in Florida. It is appropriately named the Daytona 500 because it takes place in Daytona Beach, Florida, and it is a 500 mile long race. That's 800 kilometers. And that's also 200 laps around the track. In Florida, it is illegal to keep a pregnant pig in a cage. So if that's one of your hobbies, Florida is not the state for you. And also you should get a new hobby because that's just weird and not in a good way. Yeah. The most dangerous tree in the world can be found in Florida. It's called the Manchineel tree. Florida is the only U.S. state where you will find them. They can also be found in the Bahamas, Mexico, Central America, and parts of South America. The nickname for the Manchineel tree in Spanish is Manzanilla de la Muerte, which translates to the little apple of death. That does not sound appealing. I prefer Honeycrisp apples. Manchineel trees are highly poisonous. If you see a warning sign on a tree that tells you not to touch it, don't go anywhere near it when you're in Florida. You should not eat the fruit from that tree, touch the tree, or even stand underneath one, because it might be a Manchineel tree, and it is not your friend. That was a pretty random fact, but it's one that I didn't know about, and I thought it was interesting. All right, Lincoln, let's do one more fact. Florida is home to the Everglades. 
The Everglades is an area of tropical wetlands located in the southern part of Florida. You can visit the Everglades by going to the Everglades National Park. There you will have the opportunity to see many interesting animals up close. The Everglades is the only place in the world where alligators and crocodiles live together. Speaking of animals, this is the perfect time to move into our next segment. Take it away, Lincoln. Animals are cool. Here are some facts about one of them. Animals are cool. Here are some facts about one of them. Okay, since we talked about Florida and mentioned the Everglades, we thought it made sense to choose an animal that you can find all over the Everglades. Today's animal is the alligator. Here are seven facts about alligators. There are two different types of alligators. The two types are Chinese alligators and American alligators. American alligators are found in the southeastern United States from parts of Texas all the way to the east coast as far up as North Carolina. And guess where you'll find Chinese alligators, Lincoln? China? You got it. They are located in a small area in eastern China. When an alligator loses a tooth, a new one grows in its place. An adult alligator usually has somewhere between 74 and 84 teeth. It is estimated that they will go through somewhere between two to 3,000 teeth in their lifetime. The average length of an American alligator is 13 feet. Wow, that's like four meters long. American alligators weigh about 790 pounds on average, which is 360 kilograms. Some even grow to be 14 feet long and the largest alligator ever recorded was 19.2 feet long. That one was found in Louisiana many years ago. Chinese alligators are much smaller than American alligators. They only grow to be around five to seven feet long at most. The muscles used for opening an alligator's mouth are weak. An adult human can hold the jaws of an alligator shut with their bare hands. But I don't recommend this activity. Alligators are dangerous and you shouldn't play around with them. The muscles that alligators use to close their jaws, however, are very powerful. It is easy to tell the difference between an alligator and a crocodile. Just in case you are one of the many people who have a hard time telling the difference between an alligator and a crocodile, here are some things to help you. Most alligators have wide snouts that are more U-shaped, not like Y-O-U-shaped, but as in the letter U. Crocodiles usually have longer, more narrow snouts that are shaped more like a V. Also, when a crocodile has its mouth closed, you can see the fourth tooth on each side of the crocodile's jaw sticking up over the lip. When an alligator has its mouth closed, those teeth are covered up. All right, Lincoln, what else? You should not feed alligators. That is great advice. Much like other wild animals, when you start feeding alligators, they begin to get more comfortable around humans, and then they also start associating the presence of humans with food, and we don't want that, so feeding them makes them more dangerous to humans. Making alligators more dangerous is not really my thing, and it shouldn't be your thing either. All right, our final alligator fact is... Alligators have excellent night vision. Much like cats, Alligators can see quite well in low light conditions, which is exactly why I don't hang out in dark swamps anymore. All right, I hope you enjoyed some of these facts. If you're an expert on Florida or alligators and you disagree with anything we said, please send us a message so that we can have the opportunity to correct ourselves. We know we aren't perfect, but we do try our very best to provide accurate information. All right, Lincoln, it's almost time to end the show, but I feel like we should do at least one more segment before we play the final song. Hmm, let's tell some bad jokes. Bad jokes. Okay, we haven't done that in a while. Let me just consult our master list of awesomely bad jokes here. All right, here we go. All right, audience, use these at your own risk. Are you ready, Lincoln? Yeah. These are amazing. What do you call an alligator in a vest? Oh, I know this one. An a investigator. Yes, an investigator. All right, why do French people eat snails? I don't know why. They don't like fast food. <laughs> All right, if you have 10 apples in one hand and 14 in the other, what do you have, Lincoln? I don't know. You have very large hands. <laughs> All right, Lincoln. 
Did you hear the rumor about butter? No. Well, I'm not going to spread it. <laughs> All right, what else do we have here? Oh, here's a good one. Lincoln, did you hear about the new type of broom that just came out? No. Apparently, it's sweeping the nation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do one more joke for the grown-ups out there. Don't worry, it's clean. It's clean. A man walks into a lawyer's office and asks, How much do you charge? The lawyer says, $5,000 for three questions. Wow, that's pretty expensive, isn't it? Said the man. Yes, says the lawyer. Now what's your third question? <laughs> All right, those were the jokes for today. Lincoln, did you like any of those? Yay! Which one was your favorite? I can't tell. You can't tell or you won't tell? I won't tell. Okay, my favorite one was probably the lawyer one that I just said. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's time to move on to the end of our show. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 18 of the Senor Fancy Pants Show. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please share it with all of your friends. As always, you can check the podcast details for links related to stuff from the episode. For those of you with Facebook, please look up Senor Fancy Pants and give us a like. Thanks again for listening. Right now, we're going to end the show with a dance party. You won't be able to see us dancing, but feel free to bust some sweet moves wherever you are. If you're in the car, though, please keep your seatbelt on. So it's much harder to dance when there's no music, so we're going to provide you with a fantastic song by the Pop-Ups. It's from their latest album called Giants of Science. Here is the song Shadow by the Pop-Ups. Have a great day. We'll talk to you later. I looked and saw the sunlight on the wall. My arm had made a shadow fall. The sun was moving up there on the rise. It made me wonder where the end of the sky is. I shaped my arm to make the outline of a It reaches to infinity I can't believe how far the light comes from a star I know And that's a fact, I never even had to ask It was selfless, see I was scared of the dark I couldn't help it, I'd be chilling there in the park Cause as a young kid, all I did was skateboard To the sunset, didn't wait for it, wasn't done yet So focused on nose flips and no complies And I noticed and opened my eyes To the deep night, nothing shining But a couple street lights, and the dark doesn't seem right Freaked out as I'm riding home Then I think I'm not quite alone Cause it's eye roll under a light bulb My shadow moves mad smooth, like a bodyguard With an attitude, into the dark My shadow would go there in front of me, get suddenly I wasn't so scared.